named one of the top 10 wedding photographers in the world. A legend behind the lens. World-renowned author. The one. The only. Kevin Cabot. We've got clients coming. Can you please go out and sweep the front of the office? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Thank I guess you so I can much for having send you your pictures in just a Oh my bit. gosh. What? Where is this? Oh, that's uh, that's in Italy. In, where in Italy? Um, it, Italy. Um, San... <coughs> San Gimiano? Is that where it is? Yeah, San Gimiano. Oh Gimiano. my word, are you yeah. kidding me? Yep. My grandmother grew up in this town. She said something about like a long winding road and like yeah. the houses made yeah. out of brick and cobblestone. Oh yeah. my gosh. That's it. Good. Did she well, say there was like a castle right over, yeah, right over like, here? Yeah, right over there, exactly. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Castle right there. I have to have this. I, is this for sale? Um, I have to have this. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Oh it's, my gosh. Yeah, it's well, I'm, I'm glad Giuliano. it, I'm glad oh it matches up with uh, your memories from your grandmother. I mean, she's, she's dead, right? No, no, she's she is alive and kicking. Okay. Um, she's going to be so excited. Good. I'll wrap it up for you. Okay, okay, okay sounds good. Let's Thanks. Go. Okay. <laughs> One of the coolest features of modern technology is GPS. I am a GPS geek, and I love the fact that I can geotag, put the GPS coordinates with my photos. Now, if you have an iPhone or some sort of smartphone that has a GPS in it, it automatically will tag it. And I love that, that you can take pictures of your iPhone and look up later on a map exactly where you took that photo. Now, if you're using a DSLR, taking pro photos somewhere, it's really nice to know later on, because I get asked all the time, where was that photo taken? Where was that taken? I don't know sometimes. I'm all over the place doing workshops in Italy and all over the world and I can't remember where I've taken many of these hundreds of photos. Geotagging can be much more high tech than something like this. See, this is my geotag. I'm geotagged with the, where I am, right? Get it? Forget that. All right, here's another little tip here. You got your DSLR, you can get an external GPS. This is a unit I got, this is a Nikon unit. I've been using this for a few years. It just goes right into the hot shoe of your camera. And now whenever you travel and take photos, the GPS, boom, from the sky, comes down, attaches to your images. And this plugs right into the side of your camera port here. And you're good to go. Now when I put this on, I was kind of uh, frustrated by this long cord sticking out on the side here, now which tend to get caught up in things. So I did a little modification, just a little tip for you guys for using this. There are little tabs on the back of this hot shoe mount and I actually filed them down so that I could reverse this thing, stick it in like this, and then wrap the cord around and under the body and the lens, and then attach it that way. So now the cord stays out of my way, and it doesn't really impede my hand at all, and it works just the same, because there's really no hot shoe connection. It's just sitting in the hot shoe in order to mount somewhere. It, could be, it doesn't have to even be on the hot shoe. You could have it on your camera strap or something else, and it still works. So a little tip for you if you want to geotag as you shoot. So I really love this and I take this whenever I'm traveling to geotag my images. Now, when you load those images into Lightroom, in Lightroom 4, there's a great new feature for being able to locate your images on a map directly inside of Lightroom and to see the geotag information. So here we go on our screen. Here are some images from an Italy trip. And if I go to the map module right up here on the top, and click on map, it'll show me a map and where these images were taken. You'll see there's a little marker here in the middle with an 18 on it. That means there were 18 photos in that general vicinity that were taken there. So all I need to do is if I scroll to zoom in, it will now break those in. The closer I get, it starts to separate those markers as they're clustered. So now we can see that there are four in this general region, 12 here in this general region, and then individual ones at these spots here. I'm going to zoom in even closer and I can see it more precisely. Here's Bellagio and Lake Como. And if I click on that right there, it'll snap to the image on the timeline or the uh, film strip down below. Also pop up a little window showing that image. If you click on a marker that has more than one, you'll see a little window pop up and a way to scroll through the images by clicking on the little arrows to see all the images that were shot in that same location. Now, if I was to scroll in even closer, you'll see the closer you go, the more those little tags separate to show you exact spots for where they were taken. 
All right. I can also click directly on a photo. So for example, if I was to hover over this image down here of the little fisherman in the boat, you notice as I just hover it, the little marker bounces on the screen, bouncy, bouncy, to show you where it was taken. If I click on the image to select it, the marker turns yellow, indicating that's the exact image that I'm selected. And I can now also click on it to see that same image there. And each time I click on an image, it'll jump to that marker, depending on where it was. Sometimes you have to take the GPS off, for example, if you're shooting with a flash. Now I did some images here that were some fashion kind of images. We did a little photo shoot with a model and I took the GPS off because I wanted to um, put a flash or put a flash trigger on top and I didn't want the GPS getting in the way. But I do know where those images were shot and I can locate them on the map visually, but now I wanna geotag them manually after the fact and that's really easy to do. So here's what we're gonna do. I know these images were shot here, here at Bellagio, Lake Como. And if I zoom my map out a little bit, I can scroll around and find the location. You can also type into the search, just like you would search Google Maps, a specific location up here in the search box. So if you're not visually finding it, just type in the location you want and it'll zoom to that location. But in this case, I know exactly that this little beach club right here on the water is where I shot these with our workshop. So that's the location that I want. And now I just need to select those images. So I'm gonna go down here to these images all from the workshop and select them. Now, another way you can do this is you can go up to the top where it says filters and you can click on only the images that are visible on the map, those that are geotagged or those that are not geotagged. So if I was click on the not geotag, you'll notice that only the ones that are not geotagged are visible on my timeline and the others get blacked out. So that's a quick way to see, hey, these don't have any geotags, right? So I can now select all of those together. Okay, I've got all 34, we're all 15 of those selected. And then up here on the map, where that location is that I want to geotag, this is exactly where I took it. A right click or control click on your mouse if you don't have a right clicker. Who doesn't have a right clicker these days? Come on. And add GPS location to these selected photos. Sweet. Now I'm geotagging them manually, and you'll notice right on the right side here in your metadata panel, you'll see the GPS coordinates now applied, and a little tag with 15, indicating that those 15 images were all shot in this location, and I can scroll through them and see them right there. Now that you have all your images geotagged, you can go back to the map, check out the location, make sure you know exactly where it was shot if somebody asks you. Um, but how, how else can you use this? Well, one of the things I love to do after every trip is to come back and make a nice Asuka book. Now, Asuka book makes these beautiful coffee table style books. And after every trip, I like to make a, a beautiful coffee table book from the images. So I'll put them in there. I usually put one or two images per page and a little bit of a story, a caption under every image it makes a really interesting, beautiful book. And the caption is always better if you can say this location or well, something about the location and how about this? What if you actually put the GPS coordinates in the book? So you have now a book that someone can look at and go, wow, that looks like a beautiful spot. I want to see it from Google Earth. I want to see it on the map. I want to see what's around this area. Maybe I want to go there myself one day. They can now take those coordinates right off of the book, type them into their Google map or their GPS and pull up that location directly on their device or on their computer. That would be cool. It's like you're creating an interactive book by putting in those coordinates. So an easy way to do that, for example, let's go to the print module now in Lightroom, right up here at the top. Click on print, and it switches to a print layout creator. Now we've talked about this a little bit before as well, and you can create print layouts based on what you wanna to do to print your book. So if I wanna create a 10 by 10 page, this is a single page layout uh, with one image on the page. Basically, I'm gonna create the layout the way I want with just a single image and on the right, there's an option here to show photo info, okay? Now under the photo info menu, you can create your own preset for the types of information you want shown under the image. Just go to edit down here at the bottom that allows for the caption from the metadata of the image. So if you put a caption in the metadata 
earlier, or you can do it later if you want to, that'll show up. So the caption will show up. So I choose caption and insert GPS coordinates. So whatever you want to say. Leave a little space there with room to go to my exit data and pull GPS and insert a tag for that. So I can save it as a new preset. It's going to be caption plus GPS info. So now that is used for my presets that will always show under here. Now, if you don't have anything in the caption, it'll just be blank. It'll just say GPS coordinates. If you want to put a caption on this image, simply go to the library and on the far right, you have metadata. Just select the image in question. And in your metadata, when you have EXIF and IPTC showing, there's a caption box and you can put in a caption here. Put as much or little as you want. Then when you go back to your print module and select that same image, you can see now it says the caption and the GPS coordinates. So another cool way to add some interest, some interactivity to your printed material, throw in those GPS coordinates, give people something to entice them to find out more and to get into the photo because stories sell photos. I think stories are really important. Whenever you can tell somebody more about an image or why you took it, or the background or the feeling of the day when you took that photo, the more you enhance the experience and the enjoyment of that particular photo. There's a few more cool features in Lightroom 4 that I want to cover. These are smaller things, but kind of nice to know. And one of the things, which is not really so small to some people, is soft proofing. Now, what does soft proofing mean? Does it mean that you be gentle while you're proofing? You're just, oh, like a little kitty. No, that's not what soft proofing. Soft proofing means you can see on your screen what you're going to get when you print. What a concept. Well, we can do this in Photoshop, and I've taught people how to do this in Photoshop. It makes it a little more predictable, but we haven't been able to do it precisely in Lightroom until now, and so it's really cool to have this new feature. Soft proofing is used when you have different output medium. For example, say you're using a lab like White House Custom Color and you're printing to Canvas. Well, the results printed on Canvas may be slightly different than the same image printed on metallic paper or the same image printed in a book. So you need to know ahead of time, it's good to know exactly what you're going to get in case you want to modify your file a little bit before you send it so that you get something predictable. So how do we know what we're going to get? That's what soft proofing is all about. So pull up an image that you're just about ready to send to the printer and bring it into develop mode, shortcut D. And at the very bottom of your screen, you'll see now a new option for soft proofing. And if you check that on, you may or may not see certain areas in the image get red or blue, depending on if it's going to be uh, unprintable or undisplayable on your screen. So let me explain that. At the top right, you'll now see it says proof preview. That indicates that you are soft proofing right now. You definitely are. And to the right, we have a little page icon. When this is checked on, that is indicating that this is a gamut warning the red areas showing you what cannot be printed that exact color. On the left of the histogram, there's a little icon for a monitor. And if I click on that, the blue shows up, meaning that the information there in the shadows, my monitor is not capable of even showing me that shadow information correctly. So I don't want to think that I'm going to see everything on my monitor that's actually in the file. So that one is not as critical as the print preview. Sometimes I'll turn that off. And I'll leave the print preview on so we can see that there's some of the reds here that are not going to print exactly that red. And how do you know where you're sending it? Well, right here below the histogram, there's a profile. If I'm printing a White House custom color and glossy paper, I select that profile and I'll see the image change. Now, you notice now that those red out of gamut warnings went away. That means I'm going to get a little more of the red that I have in my image when I print it to glossy paper versus what I had before, which may be luster, okay, which is fine there, or metallic. It'll lose a little bit with metallic, not a big deal. Now the gamut warning is not something you need to freak out about. It doesn't mean like there's gonna be a big black hole of missing information. Oh my God, it's gonna print terrible. It just means that some substitution of the colors is gonna happen, all right? So you can go ahead and adjust the file if you want to be more precise about it, or just let it be and say, you know what, I don't really care if that red shifts a wee little bit. 
It's not critical, it's not skin tone, it's okay. But at least I know now this is what I'm gonna get when I print it. All the other colors will look good. Let's look at another image here with more reds in it. And when that soft proofs, you can see at the top, if I turn this off and on, the areas of the red that just don't proof. It's the dark, rich shadow red tones. So if I wanna fix that so that I know exactly what I'm seeing is what I'm getting, then I need to make some adjustment to those red tones in the image. And it's easy to do that in Lightroom. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to my HSL section here, open that up, and now I have control over the saturation and the luminance of each individual color. And the easiest way to deal with this is usually to drop the saturation because that's generally the problem with the red. Or you can change the luminance, making it more of a pinky or purpley red. But let's try with saturation. So if I click on saturation here, and then click on my target adjuster, I can go into the image, click on the out of gamut reds, and drag down to desaturate those reds a little bit. All right, so when I did that, you'll see the out of gamut areas went away. As soon as I let go of my mouse, you'll notice this little warning comes up. Create virtual copy for soft proofing. This is Lightroom helping you to know that you made an adjustment just for the print. It's not something you want in the original file. You want a special copy just for this print output. So it's gonna make a virtual copy with these adjustments tuned for this print. Great, create proof copy. And now I have a virtual copy that's tweaked out just for this printing device. So soft proofing is a really valuable way to know exactly what you're gonna get before you print. Now one of the keys of course to proofing on your laptop, on any computer, is making sure your monitor is calibrated. Because if your monitor is not calibrated with one of those devices that you stick on the front of your screen and reads the colors and gives you a color profile for your monitor, if you're not calibrated, then your monitor is not gonna show you correct color anyway and there's no point in soft proofing it. So, don't bother with soft proofing unless you have a calibrated monitor to begin with. Now let's talk about a couple other cool features in the new version of Lightroom 4. When you're in the library mode, you can create collections. You've always been able to do this, create a collection to keep a certain group of images. So this could be wedding favorites, whatever it is, bride and grooms, you name it. Previously, you couldn't stack photos. Remember we did our editing in the first season of Post Pro where we did our workflow and we edited images in Lightroom and then we passed them to Photoshop and brought them back seamlessly into Lightroom and we stacked them. In other words, we hid the original below the edited Photoshop version and that's called stacking. And that's a really cool part of our workflow to keep the things streamlined and seeing only what we're gonna get. Now you couldn't stack inside of a collection previously so it made things kind of frustrating if you had already stacked them and then you wanted to use a collection, you couldn't stack them. Well, now you can stack within a collection. So if you do edit from within a collection, say this Italy collection here, and you make a copy of an image or you edit it in Photoshop, uh, you bring it back into the, the library, it's automatically gonna be in that same collection and you select those two images and hit S to then stack them together. So it's just a little tweak on our previous workflow but now you can stack within a collection, which is really cool. Here's another new feature that's kind of cool. You've always been able to email photos via an export preset, and I showed you how to create that. Well, they've made it a little easier now to do that. So say you want to email this photo now. This bride says, hey, I'd love to get a copy of that photo. You can easily do that by doing file, email, photo. So it's built right in, box pops up. You can type in the person you want to send it to. You can choose one of the ready-made sizes for the image or create a preset to size it the way you want it. So if I go to create new preset, it brings up the export dialog box and you'll see it says in the top export to email. This is a new option on the top here. And this is where you'll plug in all the settings you want when you email photos. So you could say, I always want them to be 60 quality, sRGB, size to 1200 pixels, 70 DPI, I want to sharpen them a little bit for the screen. Okay, I want to make sure that my copyright and contact info is in there, but all the other metadata gets stripped out. Some people want that so people can't see all the geotagging, all of the camera settings and everything else that's in there, any notes that you've put in there, only the copyright and contact info, which is the most critical probably. 
And you can also choose to watermark it, which is also nice if you've made a preset right here. So I have an email preset created here. I can add that one in or just choose, choose export. And now it's gonna use those settings here when I go ahead and email that photo. Pretty cool. That's all we have time for on this episode and I'll see you next week with one more great tip on the Lightroom 4 new features. And don't forget, click on the homework assignment. And what I'd like you to do is to find a great travel photo, one that you've taken somewhere in the world that you love, that you wanna share with the rest of us. Geotag it if you haven't already using Lightroom. So go ahead, search for the location, geotag it, upload it so we can all see it. And now we can go in there and get a little virtual tour of that great spot. That's what photography is all about, is sharing beautiful moments and beautiful places with the rest of the world. So see you next week on PhotoPro. Photo Pro was brought to you by White House Custom Color. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com.